Welcome back to George's Gadgets everybody. I am George and today we're going to be doing the final video for the TiVo Tarantula. I finally got around to upgrading and installing the firmware. It's been a long time coming but I've been I've had a lot of other projects going on and I've been really enjoying them and honestly coming back to this after so much time away from it has been very refreshing because it just makes me remember getting my hatchbox and having to tinker with it so much and then getting a Prusa and not having to mess with it at all. The TiVo is a great learning tool and it's an amazing entry into 3D printing and it really gets you knowledgeable in how everything works and what you might need to fix and when you need to fix it. Before we finally install the firmware, what I actually needed to do was where we left off before, the cable chain doesn't have an adapter. What I did is I designed this up. I don't really care how my printer looks. I don't care that it's a bunch of different colors and Kristen always gives me crap for not color matching and making it look nice. So I printed it out in pink because who cares what she thinks. What? So I decided to print this part out in green because I wanted it to match the cable chain and I think it looks really nice that way. All right, the first step to doing this is actually sliding all the cords just like you would the drag chain through the, the link. And next what we're gonna be doing is using a pair of pliers and I pinch the tips of it so that it'll slide in easier and connect better. After that, you just gotta put your T slot nuts into the aluminum extrusion. And I use a pair of tweezers to line it up to help me get it on right. As you can see here, Then you just tighten it down. Uh, I believe it's M4 nuts is what I made the hole for. And I'm putting this on Thingverse if you need this mount. It's a piece of crap, but if you want to use it, hey, go for it. And this is what it looks like. I think it came out pretty darn nice. Very happy with it. Obviously there's some slack, but whatever. So I installed a new part. It was really quick. I modeled out myself in Fusion 360. I am the type of person that is totally open to cheap and easy solutions. All I did was pull in the STL from the cable link, from the, the drag cable that I actually used, and just attached that to a rectangle that I extruded based off of a 20 by 40 extrusion that I brought in to get the correct distancing for the holes for the screws. And then I used some slide T-nuts that I got off of AliExpress. The links of the stuff I used down below are down below. Now what we got to do is we I'm actually going to show you how to load the firmware. Um, I'm using Marlin 2.0 and I'm using Jim Brown's Easy Config which was a breeze. So I'm going to go through step by step all the different things that you have to change in there and the settings that you need to look out for if you own a TiVo. From this point we're going to jump onto my computer and I will walk through the steps with you on that. I'll see you there. We are in the uh, computer now. All the links that I'm gonna be talking about will be located in the description below. This is where I got the firmware for my TiVo. The Jim Brown dude has done a really good job of setting this up, making it extremely easy, ex especially for non-technical people like myself. Um, there's actually a video also. This is a really good resource. One of the prerequisites that he talks about here is if you want to do this, you need the uh, 1.9. IDE and you can get that from Arduino's page and if you go here and you scroll down to beta builds you click on the windows under beta builds right here if you have windows you, you if you have Mac or Linux you could use those as well and it will pop you up to this and you click just download so after you download that then you go up here and you're going to click to clone or download this and you download it as a zip file and this is going to download all right so from there after you've downloaded the two things you're going to want to open up um, the Arduino, it, it just runs from your desktop. I extracted it to my desktop and I double click on Arduino EXE and you're able to open it. And after you open it, you can navigate to wherever you downloaded uh, Jim Brown's flavor of Marlin and you're going to open it. All right, so you're gonna open this and then this is gonna be where you mess with all your different settings. Um, this is your printer name. Uh, you can change it to whatever you want. I have mine telling my wife that she's pretty so that anytime she goes in there to check on the printer it gives her emotional support because I don't and then you're gonna change all these if you have the large bed TiVo you'd uncomment this and by uncommenting all I mean is you just backspace these two slashes if you don't have it then you leave the comment there and this will make it so that the firmware doesn't read it you want to make sure that you have SD support if your stepper motors are going the opposite direction, 
all you have to do is come in here and change this. I had a comment on one of my videos in the TiVo asking how to change that. And this is what you do is you just come in here and say, oh, I want to go the other way. And then it will do that for you. So if you have dual Zs, you got to change that. My motherboard is the MKS Gen 13. If you have any different ones, you have to change that here. And this, these links, if you click on these links, it navigates you and takes you to how you can actually fix your center point of your bed. So I had to do that and I followed the steps that Jim Brown laid out. They were extremely helpful. Um, and I ended up having to put negative 38 on my Y axis and it was, it centers my prints now. I did come in here after I've installed this and I was able to change my E steps to make sure that my extruder is sending out the correct filament. I use Matter Hacker's guide on how to do that, so I'm not going to go over that right now. But if you are extruding too much filament or too little filament, I do recommend on doing that because it will make your prints come out a lot better if you have the right E steps. If you change out your lead screw, you're going to have to change your Z steps. And then I'm running a BL touch for my auto leveling, so I uncommented that. And then it opens up all those options within the firmware for you. I'm using bilinear bed leveling and down here, the sensor, what I did is I just brought out some calipers and I measured the distance between the tip of the BL touch and then the tip of the nozzle and I got 26. And so it's sitting 26 millimeters to the right of my nozzle. So when it goes to auto level, it will use the BL touch as a center point and then when it goes to print, it will switch back to the nozzle. For grid points, I have it three and it will hit nine times, much like the Prusa. There'll be three in the front, three in the middle, and three in the back. Oh uh, yeah, this is just saying that it won't probe around a one millimeter margin around the bed. And I left these unaltered as well. I just left them as stock. I didn't mess with these as you can see because I don't have dual extruders. I did do a PID auto tune and I use Tom's guide to do that. You can run this command, he says so here, but uh, I recommend doing that as well. It helps keep your nozzle at the correct temperature. And I didn't mess with the bed because I do have the stock bed. As you can see, you're going through all these. You can alter any of these if you want, and it makes it extremely simple. And then after you're done, because this is basically the end, all you do is, is you go up to tools. You wanna make sure that your board is set to Arduino Mega and then you want to make sure that the processor is set to the AT Mega. Your port, you're going to select the right COM port. Um, if you're not sure which one it is, what I was doing is I just plugged in my printer and then I unplugged it and I would see whichever COM port would appear here. You need to make sure that you're not running Simplify 3D or Cura or any other program like Pronterface that uses the COM port because if you're running one of those and you try to upload, it's not going to be able to communicate because it's already being used. So I had to reset my computer to make sure that it was cleared. And then I plugged up my printer straight away and opened up um, Arduino and I was able to do it. But all you do after that is you click upload and it will flash it to your printer. Cool, so I'm gonna head back over to the printer and we will wrap this video up. All right, so that is it guys. That's all I have for this video. I just wanted to give you a quick rundown on the fin finishing touches on my printer and um, installing the firmware to make it run really well. Uh, I gotta say, like I said in the beginning of the video, is having a Prusa is awesome because it just works, right? You don't have to worry about it. But having a TiVo is so much fun because it's just a constant work in progress and it's never quite finished. There's always something more you can do to it. Like for instance, these benches, and I'll show you guys, they're, they're printing out pretty good. There's one spot where all of the prints now are kind of messing up and I'm pretty sure it's because the Z-Rod is messed up. So I'll probably end up replacing that in the future. But it's just something that I can continuously tweak and constantly make better. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a great learning tool. And getting in the firmware and messing with all those different settings, even though it's an easy config and I want to thank Jim Brown and the entire 3D printing community. I mean like uh, Thingy Rob for the brackets and LP Elizen Art or Elizen Ant um, for all the different parts that I use from them. The Tactical X carriage uh, and then even the drag chain that was designed by a dude who used the Tactical X carriage. Uh, the 3D printing community is great and it's amazing because we all work together to get something um, working as a team. Uh, I just love it. But I just want to end on uh, I really appreciate you guys watching and uh, I think that this will be the end of the TiVo series, unless I, I come up with some parts and, and upgrade it. Yeah, so it's been a blast. I had a lot of fun doing this, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.